KWT slaying. <laughs>
the first fruit of the second harvest, the loaves of bread, lamb. So let's read Leviticus. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So remember the wave offering is this waving motion unto the Lord, whereas the heave offering is more of a downward up and lifting offering unto the Lord. Let's continue. So one principle of the first offering is that it represents a part of the entire harvest. When that part is offered to the Lord, the remaining part becomes holy to him. It sanctifies the entire lump from which the first fruit offering comes, just as in Romans eleven sixteen. It is a reminder to the Israelite that all things should be set apart for the Lord's purpose. Romans eleven six Romans eleven sixteen. For if the first fruit part of the whole be holy, the lump, which is the remaining of the whole, is also holy and if the root be holy so are the branches so just as in romans eleven sixteen, where a fraction of dough makes the whole lump holy we also see that israel had the honor of being the first fruit of all of the nations that were specifically separated to and for yah and so they being the first fruits also made holy the rest of the nations of the earth Israel was chosen as the first fruit in order that through them the entire lump of the remaining nations might become holy and converted to Yah. So as Paul said, Israel's downfall was the blessing of the nations. The 144,000 are the best of the first fruit harvest of all of the 12 tribes of Israel. They are a sign, a guarantee of the full gathering of people from all 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Exodus 23, 19, bring the best of the first fruit of your soil to the house of the Lord, your God. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. So there's the concept of not just first fruits, but the best of the first fruit. And 144,000 are the best of the first fruits of Israel, because the nation of Israel is the first fruits of all nations. And this gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel is also a sign of the first fruit harvest of all nations gathered from the planet of mankind. He was anticipating his plan for the final harvest in which other nations besides Israel would also be gathered into the kingdom of Yah. Israel is the first fruit offering of men and women unto Yah for his use and purpose as outlined in the Old Testament. It is a proof and guarantee to all believers that God had purposed a wider harvest to be reaped from every nation under the sun. So the idea of the first fruit offering being a smaller portion of a larger harvest indicates that not only is the small portion holy, but also the entire lump is holy and acceptable to Yah. Christ, the first fruit of the dead. Christ was the first fruit of those raised from the dead. He is the first of many who died in Christ, who will be raised unto eternal life. So he's the first fruit and many are to follow. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So Christ is the first fruit of those raised from the dead, holy unto Yah. Israel is the first fruit of the nations to be offered and holy unto Yah. The 144,000 are the first fruits of the 12 tribes of Israel and who are holy unto Yah. The 144,000. 
So we're going to get into those scriptures now. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. So the 144,000 is the best of the first fruit harvest from the 12 tribes of Israel. And the great multitude is the remaining of the first fruit harvest of everyone from all nations, tribes, and tongues. The identification of the great multitude as a first fruits offering can be confirmed by examining whether they meet the characteristics of first fruit offerings. Like the 144,000, they must be found worthy, have no blemish or fault, be consecrated as holy to the Lord. The great multitude dressed in white is without fault or blemish, having washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They are obviously consecrated, made sacred, as they are before the throne of God, or Yah, and serve him day and night in his temple, since this is a great multitude. Just as Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection, the great multitude in white robes are the first fruits of the entire harvest of everyone who has ever lived. Revelation chapter 7. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, until we have sealed the servants of our Yah in their foreheads. So the sealing of the 144,000 is an indication that they have been protected to perform an assignment on earth by Father Yah just before the wrath of the Lamb is to commence. I personally believe that they may be the last warning unto mankind prior to the vials of wrath being poured out upon the whole earth. Let's continue. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So for those who say the church has replaced Israel, well, we see them here. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Aser were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Nadaph Nathaphali were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. After this, I beheld in lo a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. At this point, the 144,000 mission is complete on earth and they, along with the great multitude, have been resurrected unto everlasting life. Now Yah's wrath will fall on the earth. So at this point, right in the, at this point, you see the great multitude before the throne of Yah, and you will also see the 144,000 before the throne of Yah, right? But prior to that, when they got sealed in verse 7-2, they were being sealed, right, to perform a mission on earth because the scripture said, "Hurt, uh, be, don't hurt the earth until they are sealed, meaning that there's something that the 144,000 have to do on the earth, right? And so they need to be sealed to perform that mission on the earth. Okay. And then we see the great multitude in heaven. And so when we look at revelation 14, you're going to see how this lines up and you see the 144,000 now before the throne of Yah, along with the great multitude. So at one point, the 144,000 were on earth performing a mission or a task for father. Yah, Right. Which I believe is to warn the nations of the final wrath to come. 
and at the point of the resurrection they get uh resurrected and so we're going to get into that some more this is just uh chapter seven but we have more to talk about chapter 14 and 15 and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our god which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worship Yah, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our Yah forever and ever. Amen. For one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, you know. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Wasn't the great multitude washed in the blood of the lamb? Weren't they in the midst of great tribulation? They were in the midst of, that's why they were sealed. The 144,000 were sealed at the time. Because they had a mission on earth during the great tribulation prior to the wrath falling on mankind. Remember, there's, there are seven vials of, of Yah's wrath that's going to be poured out without mixture on the nations. Okay, so let's continue. Therefore are they before the throne of Yah and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living waters I'm sorry, living fountains of waters. And Yah shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Revelation chapter 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead, which is same as Revelation 7, which is the seal. So as in Revelation 7, 2, the Father's name is that seal. Revelation 14, 2, And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. This is highlighted in red, because you will see again in Revelation chapter 15. Revelation 14, 3, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song, but the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth. What is the definition of redeem? Redeem means to buy back, regain possession of or exchange for money, goods, etc. to redeem one's property. To ransom is to redeem a person from captivity by paying a stipulated price or to redeem from sin by sacrifice to ransom a kidnapped ch child. So they re were redeemed from captivity and redeemed from sin and re restored unto righteousness before Father Yah. Revelation 14, 4. These are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins. These are they which follow the land, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Once again, they are the first fruits and the best of the first fruits of the twelve tribes of Israel offered unto Yah as holy. Okay? So the fact that they're the first fruits means that they're not the only ones, but they are the first ones. So you see how the Jehovah's Witness says the only there's only 144,000 that will be saved at all. That's not true. They are the first to be redeemed. Right. They are the first of the 12 tribes of Israel to be resurrected and made presentable and righteous before Yah. Revelation 14, 5. And in their mouth was found no guile. For they are without fault before the throne of Yah. These men, the 144,000, were the first fruits of Israel, 12,000 from each tribe to spread the final everlasting gospel to the earth, in my opinion. They were definitely on earth to perform a work for Father Yah. 
So the 144,000 were the first among Israel to be redeemed from the earth. They were the first among the 12 tribes to be resurrected unto eternal life with their new bodies. They are the first fruits from the nation of Israel with the rest of Israel to follow along with the remaining of the great multitude of nations. Revelation 14, 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear Yah and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is here or has is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city because she had, she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. What nation makes the whole world do what she wants and follows her evil? And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yah, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So, Immediately after this scene, we see the 144,000 and then we see an angel having the everlasting gospel to preach unto all on the earth of every nation and tongue. Immediately after this, we see that Babylon has fallen. I believe that at this time it is the 144,000 who are walking the earth to spread the everlasting gospel given to them by the angel in Revelation 14:6. They were sealed prior to Yah's judgment on the earth. Why? Because they had a mission on the earth and could not perform that mission until they were sealed. Prior to the vials of rat being poured out upon mankind, 144,000 and the great multitude appear in heaven before the throne of Yah. The servants of Yah are not to be present for his wrath on the earth. So now the harvest, a.k.a. the resurrection of the righteous. Revelation 14, 11. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one set like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle saying, Thrust in thy sickle, sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vines of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vines of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the, of the wrath of God, or Yah. And the winepress was trodden without, away from the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridle by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlong. So what did we just see here? What we just saw here, right? And this is in Revelation 14, where we see the 144,000, right? What do we see here? We see the resurrection. We see the resurrection of the just and the resurrection of the unjust, right? Just as the scripture said, there are two resurrections, 
right? Blessed is he who has part in the first resurrection. This first harvest is the first resurrection, right? Where the first fruit offerings are offered unto Yah, right? Where the 144,000 are resurrected at this time. And then soon after that, the, the remaining multitude of all nations, kindreds, and tongues, including the nation of Israel, are resurrected unto Father Yah. In the second harvest we see here, right, the, the clusters of grapes are thrown into the fire and tormented. So there's two resurrections, as the scripture says. So there's no rapture. There never was a rapture as they use it, right? Escaping great tribulation. No, many, many of you may endure great tribulation, right? But what you'll see is you won't endure his father Yah's wrath, especially the Gentiles. Because uh, according to scripture, the way we see it at this time, Israel will be back in their land. Now, there is a great final battle, right? And that's Ezekiel 38. So Israel will have a final battle. And I think all this lines up at that time as well anyway. Okay, let's read Revelation chapter 15. And I saw another angel in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. As you know, here is where the 144,000 were sealed prior to the wrath of Yah. See Revelation 7-2. In the following verse, they are now in heaven with the great multitude from all nations. The great multitude is the same people in the verse below in Revelation 15 2, described as a sea of glass mingled with fire. So let's read that. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God, or Yah. What you have just seen here in Revelation 7, 9 and Revelation 15, 2 is the mystery in action spoken of in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 to 53. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So there is no rapture as, as taught today, but there is the first resurrection of the just. So we, we can move away from that concept or using that term as the rapture, if you want, because 1 Corinthians is the only evidence of mankind being transformed or changed. So those who are alive are changed and put on immortality. Okay, that is what the script, scriptures are talking about. That's what 1 Corinthians is talking about. This is the only transformation right here, right? And that is at the time of the first harvest that we saw in Revelation 14. It is at the time of the resurrection, because there's only two res resurrections. There's the resurrection of the just and the resurrection of the unjust. So at the time of the res res resurrection of the just, right, the first fruit harvest occurs, right? We got, a f we got the first harvest and the second harvest, right? The first harvest is always offered unto Yah as holy. So we see here that there's, in, in Revelation 14, we saw that there's two resurrections, right? The harvest of the wheat, harvest of the grapes, harvest of the wheat is the first fruit harvest of all, right? Harvest of the 144,000, harvest of the great multitude, which no man could number, offered wholly unto Yah. Yah only receives the first fruit harvest offered unto him as holy, right? So the second resurrection of the grapes of wrath, right? They're thrown into the fire and go into Yah's uh, bowl of wrath and endure his wrath. Revelation 15, 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, or Yah, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. 
Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed with pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vows, full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of of God and from his power and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled so you saw in Revelation 7 2 Revelation uh, 14 you saw the same scene right where Yah's judgment is going to be poured out you see the same thing here right the difference is now the uh, the wrath is not is about to be poured out no man that serves Father Yah is meant to endure his wrath. So the resurrection happens at this time, right? So the timing of the resurrection happens at this time. The 144,000 are transfigured, let's say, are transformed into their new bodies. They put on immortality. The great multitude, they put on immortality. The 144,000, right, as we saw in Revelation 14, they sing a new song that no man could could uh, learn but them. So the 144,000 are singing this this unique song unto Yah. But then you see in Revelation 15, 3, you see the song of Moses and the servant of God and unto the Lamb. This is the great multitude singing the song of Moses. Right. So there's there's worship going on in heaven. There's the 144,000. They putting on a special show and the rest of the the. Um, the redeemed are singing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. You see? So all this is happening right at the time that the wrath is falling on the earth. The rest, those who belong to Yah have been transformed, right? May put on they put on immortality. They are before the throne of Father Yah, worshiping him. And those who rejected him are enduring his wrath on the earth. And mankind. Those who serve Father Yah are not meant to endure his wrath, right? Those vows of wrath, of wrath were never meant for his, his beloved. Okay, so verse 15, 2 and verse 15, 3 is the gathering of the great, great multitude, including the 144,000, as they all sing the song of Moses. I also believe that this is the time when 144,000 sings a special song unto Yah, as seen in Revelation 14, 3. So just as I said. Okay, and you see Revelation 14, 2 and 3. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harps harping with their harps, right? This also occurs, right, where you have harps in uh, Revelation 15. Okay, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn the song but the 144,000. So this... This shows you at this time, 144,000, as I said, they sing a song. And the great multitude also sing a song in Revelation 15, 3. And we see that the vows are being prepared now to be poured out on the earth. So Revelation 7, Revelation 14, Revelation 15, all line up, right? The 144,000, they were sent to earth to perform a mission, right? They were sealed. Before the earth could be hurt. So they got sealed before the earth would be harmed. Because they can't be. They're not meant to be harmed. While they perform the Lord's duties on earth. Then we, then we see the 144,000 in heaven. Before the throne of Yah. And we also see the great multitude of all nations. Before the throne of Yah. And they all have white robes. They all worship Father Yah. The 144,000 praise him and sing, song, sing their, their, their unique song unto Yah. The great multitude sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb unto Yah. Right? All this is happening at the same time. You can look at those verses and what's happening right at that time? Father Yah is preparing to pour out his vows of wrath. Okay. 
So conclusion, the 144,000 are the first fruit offered unto Yah without blemish, 12,000 from each tribe. They are a wave offering of the best of Israel. They are the best of the first fruit offering. They are chosen and sealed. 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel to perform a last day work for Christ. They have been sealed to perform a work for Yah on the earth at this time, which is why the angels were told not to hurt the earth until they were sealed. The judgment cannot commence until they are sealed and protected. Later, we see them in heaven before the throne of Yah, worshiping and praising him with a great multitude from all nations. These are the remaining of the first fruit offerings. It is a time of worship and praise as the elect from all the nations receive their new bodies, right? They put on immortality and worship and praise the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. At this time, the wicked nations of the earth are undergoing the wrath of Yah, poured without mixture. This is the infamous great day of the Lord that is mentioned throughout scripture. This is the wrath of Yah on the nations that rejected him. So if you like what we do, please support us at patreon.com slash T E O T W. And we have cash app with dollar sign T E O T W. 7101. Peace and blessing, Israel. Your captivity is ending.